In this video, I'm going to show you all the latest and most innovative treatment methods we have for amblyopia or what some people call lazy eye. Now, although most treatment methods are designed primarily for children, at the end of the video, I'll also tell you about two new exciting treatments that are showing promise as a treatment for amblyopia in adults as well. By the way, I'm Dr. Michael Chua. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist and I make videos to help you see better, look better, and feel better too. So let's first review what amblyopia is, what causes it, and how we currently treat it. Amblyopia is a condition where the vision of one eye is blurred because that eye and the brain aren't working together effectively. You see, in a healthy visual system, both of our eyes send clear, aligned images through our optic nerves to the visual cortex in our brain. The brain processes these incoming signals and allows us to see. But in patients with amblyopia, one of the eyes is sending either blurry or misaligned images to the brain, and so that affected eye struggles to develop a strong link with the brain. As a result, our brain, our visual cortex, begins to rely more heavily on the good eye, leading to impaired vision in the weak eye. Amblyopia is a vision issue that usually arises in childhood, but it can have a lasting impact on that patient for the rest of their life if it's not addressed quickly. Now, there are generally three recognized causes of amblyopia strabismus, refractive errors, and obstruction of vision. In strabismus, there's a misalignment of the eyes. One of our eyes may be turning in or out, and so the images coming from our two eyes will be mismatched. And so if you ever cross your eyes for any period of time, you know that having double vision is very unsettling. So the brain begins to ignore the misaligned eye and favors the other eye instead. When your brain begins to ignore your misaligned eye, then you may feel a little bit more comfortable because the double vision improves. But this can cause permanent poor vision in your weak eye and several problems later in life. Refractive errors are another major cause of amblyopia. When there's a large difference in the focusing power or the prescription between the two eyes, for example, if one eye has a lot more nearsightedness or astigmatism than the other, then the images coming from that eye are more blurred than the other eye. Our brains will then learn to focus more with the good eye with a clear vision and start to neglect the blurry vision from the weak eye. The last common cause of amblyopia is visual deprivation. Basically, if there's something physically obstructing light from getting into one eye, then that eye can become weak. Some common examples for this include cataracts or clouding of the lens inside the eye or a droopy eyelid, which we call ptosis. In both of these cases, the affected eye gets less visual input, so the neural pathways between that eye and the brain don't develop properly. In all of these cases, what we see is that there's a lack of sharp, balanced visual information being sent from both of our eyes to our brain. And so, as the connection between that bad eye and the brain weakens or isn't able to develop properly, then the vision in that affected eye is blurred and poor, and it can't be corrected even with glasses, contact lenses, or surgery. The development of amblyopia can seriously affect depth perception because we need the input from both eyes to gauge 3D relationships between objects. And if it's left untreated, amblyopia can lead to permanent vision loss in the affected eye. Okay, so we understand what amblyopia is and how it occurs. Now let's quickly talk about how we eye doctors currently treat amblyopia. Then we'll talk about all the exciting new technology and treatment methods that will change how we approach this condition in the future. So the first step in preventing amblyopia is to figure out the underlying cause. For example, if strabismus or misalignment of the eyes is the cause of the amblyopia, then we may want to consider strabismus surgery to realign the eyes. Or if there's a large amount of nearsightedness in one eye, we want to make sure that the patient is wearing the correct prescription for both eyes to help ensure that both eyes can see clearly. Or if the patient has a droopy eyelid covering one of their eyes, then we'd want to do an eyelid surgery or ptosis repair to help raise that eyelid so the eye can see again. When amblyopia is detected, then treatment is focused on forcing the brain to use the weaker eye. One of the most common ways we do this is by prescribing patching. We instruct the patient, or in the cases of children, we tell their parents to have them cover the stronger eye with a patch, usually for a few hours every day. Since the good eye is covered, then this forces the child to use their weaker eye and helps stimulate its development and its connection with the brain. Another possible treatment option is atropine eye drops. Atropine eye drops cause our pupils to be dilated for several hours. So we would instruct the patient to use the atropine eye drops in their good eye each day. Since that good eye now has a dilated pupil, the vision from that eye will be relatively more blurry. So that encourages the child to use their weaker eye. Now, although both patching and atropine have been shown in multiple studies to be very effective in treating amblyopia, the problem I most often hear about when talking with families is how difficult it is to get the kid to actually tolerate the patching or the eye drops. If you have any experience with trying to put an eye patch on a child or putting eye drops into a child's eyes, 
you know that in many cases, it's very challenging and uncomfortable for both the child and the parent. And many times, unfortunately, the parent and the kid give up after trying to fight each other for hours each day to keep this patch on or to get these eye drops in their eye. Now, there are some good adhesive eye patches that you can stick on your kid's face and it works pretty well. But still, oftentimes I hear from parents about how the child quickly rips off the eye patch after they put it on. So when we consider our current standard of care for amblyopia treatment, we see that there's still plenty of room for improvement. The first new and exciting treatment for amblyopia I'll talk about is the Luminopia Virtual Reality Headset. The premise of the Luminopia VR headset is pretty simple. The headset is programmed so that the images presented to the patient's weak eye are vibrant and sharp, while the images presented to the patient's strong eye are blurred and washed out. The thought is, as kids use the VR headsets for an hour or two each day, the headset will encourage the child's brain to pay more attention to the input from the weaker eye since it will have a sharper image compared to the other eye. Parents can choose different TV shows or movies from a library of options and have their kid watch shows using the VR headset each day. Recent phase three clinical trials from the Luminopia team, which were published in the journal Ophthalmology in 2022, were encouraging. They took 105 children aged four to seven years old, fit them all for a glasses prescription if they needed one, then randomized the kids into one of two groups. The treatment group was instructed to use the Luminopia headset for one hour per day for six days per week for 12 weeks. The control group kids just wore their glasses if they needed them, but didn't receive any other amblyopia treatment. After 12 weeks of treatment, they found that for kids in the Luminopia headset group, the vision in their lazy eye or the amblyopia eye improved by 1.8 lines on a vision chart, while the kids in the control group who just wore the glasses their vision in their lazy eye only improved by 0.8 lines. So a significantly increased improvement in the luminopia group. The researchers also reported no serious adverse effects with the treatment. Now, 76% of the patients in the study actually had a history of patching previously. And so after the treatments were finished, the researchers found that for kids who had tried patching previously, 94% of them responded either likely or very likely to choose Luminopia headset over patching. Thanks to this positive phase three clinical data, Luminopia recently received FDA approval to offer the technology to patients. So it's available now, although you do need a prescription from your eye doctor. And with any new treatment, getting insurance companies to pay for the technology can be a little bit difficult, but it's an exciting new treatment option that we have to offer patients with amblyopia. The next exciting new amblyopia treatment we'll talk about is called CureSight. How the CureSight system works is you give a kid a pair of red and blue glasses. Then the child watches videos on a special monitor that has an eye tracker, which tracks exactly where the child is looking. The red and blue glasses aren't just for looks. These filters allow the CureSight software to deliver different images to each eye. By integrating data from the pupil tracker, the CureSight system is able to blur the center of the image seen by the patient's good eye while keeping the image seen by the patient's weak eye sharp. This encourages the child's brain to favor input from the patient's weak eye and helps to treat their amblyopia while the child watches videos on the monitor. And if you think about it, the general approach is quite similar to that of Luminopia. The premise of CureSight is that they're basically using software and specialized glasses to blur the image of the good eye while maintaining a clear picture in the weak eye. Results from their clinical trial were also published in the journal Ophthalmology in March of 2023. They took 103 children aged four to nine with amblyopia and randomized each kid to either receive the CureSight treatment for 90 minutes a day for five days a week for 16 weeks or the control group, which would do patching for two hours a day, seven days a week. At the end of the study, they found that kids who use the CureSight system their weak eye improved by 0.28 logmar, or basically by 2.8 lines on a vision chart. Patients in the patching group improved by 0.23 logmar, or 2.3 lines on a vision chart after the 16 weeks. This study showed that the CureSight treatment was at least as good, if not better, than the current standard of treatment for amblyopia, which is patching. Like the Luminopia study, there were no serious adverse effects reported and 93% of patients reported that they choose the CureSight digital treatment over patching. And thanks to their encouraging clinical trial data, CureSight also recently received FDA approval, so their therapy is now available to patients, of course, with a prescription from an eye doctor. Before we talk about the last two treatments, which have shown effectiveness in treating adults, I wanted to tell you about my optimized newsletter. If you want science-backed tips on how to protect your vision and health delivered straight to your inbox, you can sign up for my optimized newsletter at michaelchuamd.com. Okay, the last two treatments we'll talk about for treating amblyopia are particularly interesting because they've delivered improvements in the vision of adults with amblyopia. 
The reason why treating amblyopia in adults is so challenging has to do with a concept called neuroplasticity. Basically, when we're all babies and young children, our brains are highly plastic and adaptable. Our neural pathways for vision are still developing as we're growing. The problem with amblyopia is that during this critical period of when our visual pathways are developing, the brain is not receiving enough clear vision input from both of our eyes. So these connections between our eyes and our brain are unable to form properly. As we get older, as in during our teenage years and older than that, what we see is that the brain's plasticity decreases with time. These neural pathways become more fixed. So trying to change these pathways becomes more difficult. And if you're an adult with amblyopia, maybe you've asked your eye doctor about what you can do to treat or possibly reverse the amblyopia. And what they probably told you is, well, not much. Scientists and ophthalmologists around the world have attempted countless times to try to treat amblyopia in adults. And unfortunately, many of these attempts have failed until now. Recent research has shown us that there actually may be some hope on the way for adult patients with amblyopia. The first promising treatment for amblyopia in adults we'll cover is Revital Vision. Currently, it's the only FDA approved option for older children and adults. Revital Vision is basically a vision training software that gets prescribed by your eye doctor. And the software uses these specific patterns called Gabor patches to stimulate the visual cortex in your brain. I actually use these Gabor patches a lot when I was doing vision neuroscience research back in college. The reason why Gabor patches are such a powerful tool for visual stimulation is because our brains are hardwired to notice contrast. And a perfect example of contrast are black and white bars, which is basically what a Gabor patch is composed of. Now, the other cool thing about Gabor patches is that you have a lot of control over exactly how they look. For example, you can have the bars pointing up and down if you want to have the patient see vertical stimuli, or you can have them point horizontally or diagonally. You can also change how big the bars are inside each patch, and you can change how much contrast there is in each patch. So for Revital Vision, the typical treatment protocol consists of 40 training sessions, which will be done on a home computer. Each session is about 30 minutes, and training is done three to four times per week over three months. This randomized control study, which was published in 2013, looked at 99 patients aged 9 through 50 years old with amblyopia. Patients who were chosen for the treatment group completed the Revital Vision training sessions for 30 minutes, three times a week, for a total of 45 sessions. Patients in the control group did patching for 30 minutes, three times a week. After completion of the trial, researchers found that for patients who received the Revital Vision training therapy, their vision improved by an average of 2.6 lines on the vision chart while patients in the patching control group only improved by an average of 0.8 lines. They also reported that patients who received the vision therapy had improved contrast sensitivity and 3D depth perception. So this study and a few others showing similar results are encouraging and show the promise of Revital Vision software in helping even adults with amblyopia. The last emerging treatment option we'll discuss for treating amblyopia, particularly in adults, is a medication called Donepezil. Donepezil is actually a medication that historically has been used to treat Alzheimer's dementia. Remember that concept of neuroplasticity and how as we get older, it can become more difficult for our brains to rewire the connections that have developed when we were kids? Well, previous research has shown that the neurotransmitter acetylcholine plays a key role in controlling just how plastic and moldable our brains are. So researchers and ophthalmologists from Harvard Medical School wondered if donepezil, which can alter the levels of acetylcholine in our brains, they wondered if donepezil can help our brains regain that plasticity we lose as we get older, and whether it could be used as an effective treatment for adults with amblyopia. They published their results in the journal Nature in June of 2023, and the results were encouraging. They took 16 patients, so it's a small study, but they took 16 patients aged 9 to 37 years old with amblyopia and gave them oral donepezil for 12 weeks. They started patients on a dose of either 2.5 milligrams daily for patients between 8 to 17 years old, or 5 milligrams daily for patients 18 and older. And if the patient's weak eye didn't improve by at least one line after one month, they increased the dose by another 2.5 milligrams for a maximum dosage of 7.5 milligrams or 10 milligrams. They followed the research participants for 22 weeks total and remember, the patients only took the donepezil for 12 weeks, so they also followed them for 10 weeks even after the patient stopped taking the donepezil. They found that, on average, the visual acuity of the patient's weak amblyopic eye improved by 1.2 lines, and 25% of patients had an improvement of more than two lines. They also didn't report any serious adverse effects with the treatment. Now, this was a pretty modest effect. It was only 1.2 lines, and it's quite a small sample size in the study. It was only 16 patients. But 
This study is encouraging because it's showing us that there might be potential in medications such as denepazole, or maybe scientists will discover different medications that will allow us to modify the plasticity of our brains even after we reach adulthood. Nonetheless, we'll need further studies like larger randomized control trials in the future to really investigate the potential of denepazole. I hope this review of the latest and greatest treatments of amblyopia was useful to you. If you live in Los Angeles, Orange County, or the Inland Empire area and want an eye exam, feel free to visit our website or give our phone number a call to make an appointment today. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get all the latest updates. And if you made it this far into the video, that probably means that you're really interested in improving your vision and health. You can watch my video here to try a fun home eye test to see how your eyes are doing. I'm Dr. Michael Chua with Prana Hills Eye Care. See you next time.